This is the absolute basics of CMake, targeted at compiling C projects. Just enough to be able to build executables from multiple files and to control the settings used by the build process. CMake is a tool that lets us design how a build system takes our source code and builds our executables from it. It's used for lots of languages, but I'm focused on how we use it for building C projects. As with everything else, the designers of C wanted to give the developers control. So the C tools are pretty simple. While we're building C systems from multiple source files, the compiler compiles each individual source file, and then the linker puts the output files from the compiler together to build our executable. If we're building libraries, there's an extra level of complexity, but let's ignore that for now. So CMake lets us specify how things get compiled and what the linker needs to put together in a file named cmakelists.txt. The first thing you need to do in the cmakelists.txt file is to specify the versions of CMake that you want to use. We do that with the CMake minimum required command. In its simplest form, you just specify the minimum version you want to use. Then you can build your CMake list text file using that version, and future versions will be backwards compatible until you get deprecation warnings. If you like, you can also specify a max version. If you're really thorough, you can add fatal error. For versions after 2.4, not being able to meet the requirements is always a fatal error, so this is just ignored after version 2.6. However, if there's a chance you could run into a version earlier than that, having fatal error will make sure that CMake will always make not being able to meet your requirements crash the build process. I've given you a link here that you can use to find the most recent CMake version. The next thing you have to tell CMake about is your project. At a minimum, you have to give your project a name and specify the languages that it uses. However, if you like, you can also give it a version number, a description, and specify a homepage that talks about it. Note, if you have any of these additional arguments, you have to put the word languages before the list of languages that it uses. One of the things that makes CMake really powerful is that you can control a million things. There is a long list of settings variables that you can individually set. When I'm building plain C programs, the one I use most is CMake C standard, which lets me specify the ANSI C version I want the compiler to meet. You do that by specifying the year of the standard. And these are the years of those standards, 90, 99, 11, 17, or 23. Here's a link to the entire list of variables that you can play with. In addition to setting the compiler version, you can set the compiler options that you want to use. The parameters here are exactly the flags that you'd like the compiler to use. Now that we've set up the parameters of the build, we can specify the executables that the build should produce. For each, we specify the name of the target and the list of source files, both the C and .h files, that the executable should be built from. The other parameters are useful if you're building libraries, but for standard C projects, you don't need them. Notice that I've specified two executables. The first has a runnable C file named main.c, which uses the functionality in project.c. In the second, unittests.c has a main that tests the behavior in project2.c. It also uses an extra include file with the details about the tests. So when this CMake file is run, both of those executables will be built with the same build process. These executables are also called targets. Now that we have specified targets, we can tell CMake about things that are specific to one or more of those targets. For example, if our include files are in a different directory, we can use target include directories to tell it where to find them. The one of these I use most often is target compile options, which lets me add more compiler flags for just one of the targets. In these, the public private interface options are really only relevant when you have your code separated into different subdirectories and you've made a CMake file for each directory. That's beyond the scope of this video. Hmm. 
I should make another about how to structure big C projects. Well, for single directory projects, private will suffice. You can also specify before or after. For the include directories, that specifies whether your new directories should be added at the beginning of the path list or at the end. Essentially, you're specifying the order of the directories it should search for the include files. For the compiler options, you're specifying whether these new flags should be added before or after other include flags specified for the system as a whole. So when it's all done, our cmakelist.txt file for our simple C project will look something like this. I hope that's enough to get you started. I'll try to come back to this topic to flesh out some more complex situations soon.